So, uh, we have completed the previous chapter that was regarding cell cycle and cell division. Before we move on to the next one, that is anatomy of flowering plants, chapter number six. I just want to confirm one aspect. Have we completed syncytium and sinocytic type of multinucleate condition in the previous chapter? We have gone through that, yeah. Okay, thank you, Zane. So now uh, we have completed the chapter number 10. We go to the next chapter number six, the anatomy of flowering plants. First, <clears throat> See, in general, anatomy is the structure, you know, study of internal structures of the organisms. When you say plant anatomy, we refer to study of internal structures of plants in their root, stem, leaves, in internal aspects of these organs. What type of tissue arrangements are there? That study is called as anatomy of flowering plants, anatomy of plants, plant anatomy. Basically, it's all about the arrangement of tissues inside the plant. This term tissue. As such, its individual study is called as histology. Exclusively study of tissue is called as histology. But when you study the entire organization of these tissues inside the organ, then you are talking about anatomy. So histology is about individual tissue study, whereas anatomy is about arrangement of tissues inside the organs of the body. So these two terms are different. The term tissue, it was coined by Bickett, a father of histology. The father of histology, Bickett, had coined the term tissue. <clears throat> Weaving. It is related, this term tissue is related to weaving, Greek term hai. The way the fibers are in getting interwoven in a cloth. Cloth is made up of fibers which are getting interwoven. That's the way the cells get interwoven and constitute the tissue. So from that, the term, Greek term tissue, it has been derived. The definition says that in biology, the definition of tissue says that it is basically a group of cells which have common origin and are meant to perform common functions. We call it as the tissue. <clears throat> group of cells having common origin and performing common functions that group constitutes tissue. That group constitutes tissue. Now, our focus shall be on plants. So first of all, we will be discussing about a brief outline of plant tissues. Look at the classification of plant tissues. Basically, plant tissues have been classified into two categories, meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. <clears throat> the entire body of the plant that is totally made up of different plant tissues, 
these plant tissues can be categorized into two. Number one, the meristematic tissue group. Number two, permanent tissue group. See, the basic difference is meristematic tissues have a power of cell division as it is, they can divide. Whereas in as it is form, permanent tissues cannot undergo cell division. So first and foremost, you have to remember meristematic tissues possess power of cell division in as it is form. Whereas a permanent tissue, their cells cannot divide in as it is form. Remember this one. <clears throat> Why I'm using the word as it is? Because a permanent cell can go back to the, it can transform itself back into the meristematic tissue and then it can start dividing. So I said, in as it is form, permanent tissues cannot divide. Its cells cannot divide. Achha, permanent tissues only give rise to the the, the meristematic tissues only give rise to the permanent tissues. When embryo starts its life, initial life, and developing the root and shoot system, it initially forms the meristematic tissue. That zygote to embryo, embryo forms meristematic tissue. It is these meristematic tissues which keep producing the permanent tissues in the body and plant will mature over there. <clears throat> The life of the plant can be divided into two phases. First, with primary growth. And next is the secondary growth. So, embryo, then primary growth, and then secondary growth. In all these stages of life, the meristematic tissue will keep producing the various permanent tissues. Let's first focus on meristematic tissues. Based on the, uh, you can say, <clears throat> location, you, you can divide the meristematic tissue in apical meristem, the lateral meristem, and the intercalary meristem. Now, this is purely based on location. These classifications. On the other hand, <clears throat> you have a permanent tissues, which are further divided into two categories, simple permanent tissue, complex permanent tissue. What is that? Parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, with the, with the fibers of it or sclerides of it in the sclerenchyma. Even erenchyma and chlorenchyma, the photosynthetic tissue called chlorenchyma. All these five different types of tissues are coming under the category of simple permanent tissue. On the other hand, The complex permanent issues are of two types, that they are xylem and phloem. See, the xylem and phloem, they are meant for transportation of materials, whereas simple permanent issues are given varieties of other functions. This uh, complex permanent tissues are made up of more than one different types of components. Deekho, ye hai xylem, but it is made up of components such as tracheids, <clears throat> vessels, parenchyma, sclerenchyma, etc. Look at even this phloem. Hai to ek permanent complex tissue but itself is made up of sieve cells, sieve tubes, companion cells, parenchyma, fibers, etc. 
So when <clears throat> a given uh, permanent tissue is made up of more than one different types of components, it is called as complex permanent tissue. On the other hand, if you look at parenchyma or colenchyma or sclerenchyma, individually, let's say parenchyma. So parenchyma is not made up of different components. It is just made up of what? Parenchyma cells. Ya fir colenchyma. Just made up of what? Colenchyma cells. So that is the difference between simple permanent tissue and complex one. Once again, I will repeat. A simple permanent tissue is made up of only one kind of component within the tissue. Complex permanent tissue made up of more than one kind of components in themselves. Now, I have given you the overview, the brief, uh, brief overview of plant tissues. If you have any question regarding this, please ask. Okay, only two students have replied. That means others are either not attending or not interested, which is the case. Are you not interested or not attending? Okay, fine. Majority said, yes, you have understood. So not going in further detail. Just one minute. A tissue is a group of cells with uh, three different features. Two different features rather. Number one, common origin, Chugal correct. Common origin is the first point. Second point, perform common functions. That's it, correct. Next point. Plant tissues have been divided into two categories. Category number one, which is that category? Meristematic tissues, constantly dividing cells. When they divide, they give rise to permanent tissues. <clears throat> Next, which are the three different types of permanent tissues? Which are the three different types of permanent tissues? Are this uh, marismatic tissues? Which are the different types of marismatic tissues? Apical, intercalary, and lateral, based on the Location inside the plant body. This is the classification of marista. There is another type of classification of meristem, like primary meristem, secondary meristem, but that is based on the origin time. Anyways, coming back to our permanent issues. Permanent issues have been further divided into which two categories? Simple permanent and complex permanent. 
simple permanent a given tissue is made up of same kind of components first example <coughs> <coughs> Parenchyma. Second example. <clears throat> Colenchyma. Exactly. And third example. Sclerenchyma. Okay. On the other hand, the complex permanent issues, each one made up of multiple components. One example. Complex per xylem and another example, phloem. So that's a brief overview of various types of issues in plants. Now we will talk about specifically first the meristematic tissue. Let's focus upon meristematic tissue now. <clears throat> Just give me one minute. Is it seen? Diagram number 6.1, meristematic tissue. Hi, Anna. <clears throat> Fine, let us talk about this meristematic tissue. See this term, meristos, it's a Greek term. I show you another diagram first and then we'll take you to this initially we will use this diagram a greek term maristos refers to the one which is continuous It undergoes continuous division. For that, the Greek term meristos is used. This term was first used by scientist Negeli. So Negeli coined the term meristos. For those tissues which have a power of continuous cell division. See, <clears throat> wherever this tissue is present, it has following features. First of all, its cells are always living. In a meristematic tissue zone, cells are always living. They are small sized. Compactly arranged in a small area, small group of cells, constantly dividing. So they are compactly packed with a very small size over there. They have thin wall. The cells which have to constantly divide, their walls are supposed to be thin. Otherwise, thick walls will, you know, increase the duration of cell division. They are, these are supposed to divide rapidly. The thick walls are hindrance, obstacle in rapid cell division. This ones have to go for rapid cell division. They have a thin walls. They are undifferentiated. Which means in context of a plant body, they are neither parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, 
क्लोरेन कायमा एरेन कायमा नॉर्थ झायलम फायबर्स और झायलम वेसल्स नॉर दे आर फ्लोइंग सी यू सेल सी यू ट्यूब कंपेनियन सेल just like an embryo cells which are part of the body but are not differentiated these kind of nature they have they are undifferentiated they can transform into different types of cells of the body these are the meristematic cells compactly arranged already i have mentioned i said that they are supposed to be arranged in a small area small portion in the plant body so as many cells that can be arranged over there compactly small sized one without intercellular spaces they are arranged over there they have a very large and active nucleus in them large and active nucleus means what see the cells which are rapidly dividing they need to have an active nucleus over there so that's the reason why they have this arrangement they have a dense protoplasm a small cell has to divide redivide for hundreds of time and give rise to so many new cells so naturally it's going to be packed with the protoplasm dense protoplasm vacuoles are absent in them their entire cell is filled with the protoplasm no space for vacuoles and they have large number of mitochondria you see the cell which is actively dividing requires lot of energy shall be supplied by mitochondria these are the characteristics of meristematic tissue remember these are the characteristics of meristematic tissue the main characteristics which you need to remember are number 1 living cells and number 2 undifferentiated no compromise in this everybody will have to remember these two points if you cannot remember other points for time being it's still okay but you all must remember that these are the constantly dividing cells that are undifferentiated you got to remember this thing next <clears throat> coming to the types of meristematic tissue look i mentioned the you know based on function agar dekha jaye an origin type so actually two type ke meristematic tissues hote hain primary meristem tissue and another one is a secondary meristem tissue irrespective of the location if the meristematic tissue is responsible for primary growth of plant organs then it is called as primary meristem if the given meristem is responsible for secondary growth of plant organs then that meristem is supposed to be called as secondary meristem <coughs> लॉजिकल है प्राइमरी ग्रोथ ऑफ प्लांट ऑर्गन इज ब्रॉड अबाउट बाय प्राइमरी मैरिस्टेम सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ ऑफ द प्लांट ऑर्गन इज बीन ब्रॉड अबाउट बाय सेकेंडरी मैरिस्टेम नाउ द क्वेश्चन फॉर यू इज व्हाट इज अ प्राइमरी ग्रोथ एंड व्हाट इज अ सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ इन अ प्लांट बॉडी तो जब प्लांट जब मैच्योर होता है सो बिफोर इट बिकम्स मैच्योर the growth that it experiences it is known as primary growth and after the maturity further it will grow 
then that growth is known as which growth? Secondary growth. This may take place in plants or it may not take place in plants. In some plants, after maturity, there will be a secondary growth. In other plants, after maturity, there will be no secondary growth. Means every plant has to go for which growth? Primary. But secondary growth is an optional phenomenon. How many have understood this thing? Ek example ke saath de deta. Dicot plants mein primary growth hota hai aur jab maturity aati hai, uske baad plant mein secondary growth bhi hota hai. Unka stem thickened hota hai, root thickened hota hai. Girth of a stem and root keeps on increasing in them. That is an example of a secondary growth. Whereas, whereas in case of monocot plants, maize, wheat, rice, etc., they do have a primary growth till maturity. But after becoming mature, they will not show which growth? Secondary growth. So, you understand karna hai. A logical matter which I will revise again and revise kar deta ho, because that is very vital in understanding the meristematic tissue. It goes in this manner. Have a look. Number one, in plants, the growth can be categorized into two. It can be a primary growth and the second is secondary growth. See, how does education happen in your education? Primary education, secondary education happen? You go to one level higher, then you come to the primary level. You come to the higher level. Primary to secondary growth. Primary education to secondary education. Studies, you go to one level higher, then you go to the higher secondary education. So basically, what I am trying to understand, make you understand is, in plants, the growth can be of two types. When the seed is germinating, the embryo is developing itself into a sapling and that sapling becomes a mature plant. Up to that, the growth period is called as primary growth. Which every plant has to go through, whether it is dicot or monocot. <coughs> After attending maturity, Further plant keeps growing, particularly stem thickness keeps increasing, its root thickness keeps increasing. That is known as a secondary growth. That is termed as secondary growth. That will not be seen in monocot plants, but it will be seen in dicot plants. So dicot plant ki life may embryo se leke, seed embryo se leke, mature plant the primary growth or mature plant keeps growing for the entire life, showing the secondary growth. Whereas in monocot plant, seed embryo se leke maturity, the primary growth, or ek bar primary growth achieve ho gaya, then after they do not show secondary growth. Very rarely, a monocot plants are few examples, very rare examples, where a monocot plant shows what? Secondary growth. And whenever secondary growth occurs, basically the stem becomes larger and larger, its diameter increases. And second is the root diameter increases. Usko secondary growth kehte. Leaf ana, fruit ana, flower ana. It's not a part of a secondary growth. How many are clear with what I have explained? Yeah, how many are clear with this, what I have explained? Koi doubt hai to pooch lo abhi. Primary growth, secondary growth. In a life of a dicot plant, from seed to a mature plant, it is called primary growth. And then after, the mature plant will also exhibit secondary growth in terms of increasing diameter of its stem and root. 
in life of a monocot plant from the germinating seed to the mature plant it is primary growth and whole life plant remains with this primary growth it does not show secondary growth by it you know it doesn't increase the girth of its stem and root so that is called as monocot plants life aap dekhna agar bamboo plant hai ya maize plant hai maturity maturity ke baad bhi uska stem ka thickness as it is rehta hai patla rehta hai aapne dekha hai banyan tree and mango tree and others people tree you know their girth of the stem goes on increasing year after year dekha hai aisa dicot plants mein aap logo ne thickness goes on increasing over there and that is called as a secondary growth that one is termed as secondary growth now i hope you have understood still if there is any doubt you ask otherwise i will go to the next one <clears throat> okay fine no one is raising any doubt question i consider it as understood dekhiye फंक्शन के बेस पे प्राइमरी मैरिस्टेम प्राइमरी ग्रोथ करता है सेकेंडरी मैरिस्टेम सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ करता है लोकेशन के बेस पे जो ऑर्गन के टिप पे हो उसको अपाइकल मैरिस्टेम जो ऑर्गन के इंटरनल पार्ट्स में बिटवीन दी परमानेंट इश्यूज हो उसको कहते हैं इंटर कैलरी मैरिस्टेम ये वाले जो टिश्यूज है मैरिस्टमेटिक टिश्यू लोकेशन वाइज इनको अपाइकल और इंटर कैलरी मैरिस्टेम कह सकते हैं हम फंक्शनली दे आर विच वन प्राइमरी मैरिस्टेम they help in primary growth of the plant body i hope you have understood because you now know what is a primary growth to mujhe wo abhi detail mein abhi jana nahi padega on the other hand your lateral meristem positioned laterally in the body this meristem is an example of secondary meristem this will be responsible for which growth that thickness and all that secondary growth is coming ye dicots mein hota hai lateral meristem monocots mein nahi hoga kyunki monocots mein secondary growth bhi nahi hota how many have understood this aspect which i mentioned location wise one is apical one is intercalary and another one is lateral तो ये इनका प्लांट बॉडी में पोजीशन होता है बट अगर फंक्शन देखो तो अपाइकल मैरिस्टेम एंड इंटर कैलरी मैरिस्टेम ऑलवेज बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर प्राइमरी ग्रोथ सो दे शुड बी कलेक्टिवली नोन एज अ प्राइमरी मैरिस्टेम ऑन द अदर हैंड लैटरल मैरिस्टेम इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ इट इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सेकेंडरी मैरिस्टेम ऑल्सो सो एक चीज को आप डिफरेंट एंगल से अंडरस्टैंड कर सकते हो चलो इन तीन में से डाइकोट में कौन से वाले हो गए हाँ जबकि लैटरल वन विल बी मिसिंग इन विच वन लैटरल मैरिस्टेम विल बी मिसिंग इन विच प्लांट्स एग्जैक्टली मोनोकोट सो यू गाइस हैव अंडरस्टूड दी क्रक्स ऑफ दिस मैटर डाइकोट प्लांट में मेनली प्राइमरी ग्रोथ के लिए अपाइकल मैरिस्टेम एंड सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ के लिए लैटरल मैरिस्टेम जबकि मोनोकोट प्लांट में अपाइकल मैरिस्टेम और इंटर कैलरी मैरिस्टेम से प्राइमरी ग्रोथ होता है दर इज नथिंग लाइक अ लैटरल मैरिस्टेम इन दैम यू कुड सी दैट अपाइकल मैरिस्टेम इज एट द टिप ऑफ दी ऑर्गन यू कुड सी दैट intercalary meristem is between the permanent tissues getting sandwiched between the permanent tissue inside the organ and number 3 lateral meristem aap agar dekho to is portion ka sectional view hai ye stem aisa hai yahan se cut kiya agar ho kisi ne if you take a section of this part it will look like this and there you can see this tissue this is the 
टिश्यू अरेंज इन अ लेटरल पोजीशन ऑर्गन में ऐसा सर्क्यूलरली अरेंज्ड है लेटरली अरेंज्ड है सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज लेटरल मैरिस्टेम इन टर्म्स ऑफ पोजीशन हाँ फंक्शनली ये क्या करता है स्टेम का गर्थ इंक्रीज करता है ये ऐसा गर्थ को इंक्रीज करता जाएगा ओके दैट वॉज दी लेटरल मैरिस्टेम हाउ मेनी हैव अंडरस्टूड दी लेटरल मैरिस्टेम सिलेंड्रिकल अरेंजमेंट सिलेंडर के फॉर्म में अरेंज होता है ये अगर स्टेम का सेक्शन है तो आप देखो यहां पे, इट्स अ सिलेंडर ऑफ मैरिस्टेम रनिंग ऑल अलोंग देंथ ऑफ द स्टेम दैट इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ लेटरल मैरिस्टेम आई वुड बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट इन द सीक्वेंस दैट इज एन अपाइकल मैरिस्टेम This is the root tip, and this is the shoot tip. Root tip and shoot tip. You see, the meristematic tissue that is present either at the root tip here is that meristematic tissue cell mass. or else here at the tip of the shoot jab embryo hota hai aur uska root aur shoot ka tip part hota hai so there you can see this mass this one is called as root apical meristem this one is called as shoot apical meristem how many have understood position of this apical meristem the meristematic tissue that occurs at the tip of root as well as at the tip of shoot in order to produce the primary tissues aapko pata hai primary growth ki tissues ko kehte hai primary tissues it is known as apical meristem first of all the root apical meristem let's talk about root apical meristem it will be at the tip of the root it will be responsible for elongation of the root root ko elongate karta rehta hai normally it remains covered with the root cap this portion remains protected by the root cap and it is this tissue which keep producing the new cells over here and keep elongating the root on the other hand we have a shoot meristem shoot apical meristem it is responsible for elongation of shoot it is responsible for elongation of shoot आपके पास अगर एक पेंसिल है या पेन है तो आप कंसीडर करो कि वो एक प्लांट की एक्सिस है उस एक्सिस के दोनों एंड पे अपर एंड को शूट टिप कंसीडर करो लोअर एंड को रूट टिप कंसीडर करो एंड से दैट दिस आर द साइड्स वेयर व्हाट इज प्रेजेंट मैरिस्टेम एंड दीज वंस विल इलांगेट दैम जैसे एक एग्जाम्पल मैं देता हूं आपको कैसे अंडरस्टैंड करना है इसको let's assume that this axis represents plant body and let's say that this is root and this is shoot so this tissue is present at the root tip and it is also present at the shoot tip this will be responsible for elongation of the same एक्सिस को और इलांगेट करेगा शूट टिप विल ब्रिंग इट अपर एंड दिस वन विल टूवर्ड्स दर्क टूवर्ड्स दी लोअर एंड सो पूरी एक्सिस का क्या हो रहा है 
इलांगेशन हो रहा है आई होप यू कुड मेक आउट यू अंडरस्टैंड सो शूट एपेक्स शूट एपाइकल मैरिस्टेम इलांगेटिंग द शूट इन अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन रूट एपाइकल मैरिस्टेम इलांगेटिंग द रूट इन लोअर डायरेक्शन एंड दैट इज हाउ द just a minute where is that diagram huh? that is how this apical meristem is elongating the plant axis stem axis and root axis both boliye shreya hello sir can i rejoin hmm now when particularly in a stem case agar aap stem shoot ke bare mein baat karte ho so this apical meristem over here as in when it is responsible for elongating the stem tip so during the formation of leaves and elongation of stem jab ye stem ki axis increase hoti hai so small layers of marismatic tissues are left behind meant for growth of the leaves and the growth of the axillary buds let me explain see the side ones are leaves at the top what is present apical meristem in the shoot axis that is the one which is present here it left a meristematic tissue while growing up so when it left the meristematic tissue while growing up this patch gave rise to axillary buds and leaves over that आगे यहाँ पे उसने आगे बढ़ा तो फिर से एक बार रिलीज कर दिया एक छोटा सा लेयर मैरिस्टमेटिक पैच का विच विल कीप प्रोड्यूसिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्सिलरी बर्ड एंड लीव्स इन दिस स्टेम एक्सिस ये स्टेम एक्सिस है ये टिप है सो लाइक दिस एक एक्सिस है फिर ग्रो करता है उसके एक्सिलरी बर्ड्स एंड लीव्स डेवलप होते हैं फिर टिप आगे बढ़ता है एक और बार वो मैरिस्मेटिक टिश्यू का पैच रिलीज कर देता है विच विल गिव राइज टू अनदर लेयर ऑफ एक्सिलरी बर्ड एंड लीव्स हाउ मेनी हैव अंडरस्टूड द सेम दिस इज हाउ द स्टेम एक्सिस कीप ग्रोइंग कीप लिविंग बिहाइंड द लेयर्स ऑफ मैरिस्टेम फ्रॉम द डिटैच फ्रॉम द अपाइकल मैरिस्टेम and they will keep producing the axillary buds and leaves in those positions in those positions this is how the axillary bud and leaves will be born over there the cells which are left behind from shoot apical meristem will develop axillary bud over there fir is axillary bud mein se aapko baad mein branches develop hoti hui dikhai degi yahan pe leaves ho gaye फिर यहां पे ब्रांचेस डेवलप करेगी सेम विल हैपन हियर दिस विल टर्न इनटू द लीफ एंड द ब्रांचेस विल डेवलप फ्रॉम द एक्सिलरी बर्ड और ऊपर की और प्लांट की एक्सिस इंक्रीज होती जाएगी एट द टॉप पार्ट ओवर देयर आर यू गेटिंग द सेंस ऑफ व्हाट आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग टू यू this is how the apical meristem helps in growth elongation of the shoot axis in this case same will happen even in a root root ka elongation bhi exactly as but wahan pe axillary bud and leaves nahi hota wahan pe sirf root axis ka elongation karna hai because root doesn't have a buds and leaves and flowers so ye sab shoot axis mein hota hai not in a root axis चलो क्विकली रिवाइज कर देता हूं मैं 
आप इसको अंडरस्टैंड करो कोई डाउट है तो क्वेश्चन पूछ लेना द मैरिस्टमैटिक टिश्यू पैच प्रेजेंट एट द टिप ऑफ द रूट एंड टिप ऑफ द शूट आर नोन एज अपाइकल मैरिस्टैंड दे आर मेंट फॉर प्राइमरी टिश्यू फॉर्मेशन एंड प्राइमरी ग्रोथ ऑफ द गिवन ऑर्गेन रूट अपाइकल मैरिस्टैम एट द रूट टिप रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इलांगेशन ऑफ रूट डाउनवर्ड द शूट अपाइकल मैरिस्टैम एट द टिप ऑफ द शूट इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर शूट इलांगेशन वेन इट इज इलांगेटिंग द शूट एक्सेस एज एज वेल एज डेवलपिंग द लीव्स हाउ इट डज इज दैट इट लीव्स बिहाइंड few layers of cell in between so that when the tip is going up this left behind cell layers will constitute what is called as next set of leaves and the axillary buds leaf primordium means primitive uh, undeveloped leaf which is yet to be developed and axillary buds will be developed from this left behind masses of shoot apical meristem and in this region the axillary bud may give rise to further branches and flowers and other structures in future this was the profile of apical meristem now time to ask questions if you have if not then we shall have a break for 5 minutes yes jayati go ahead so root type root apical increase tha tyare layers chode cell na jam shoot na chode no 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 because it doesn't need to uh, develop uh, you know any other structure stem mein kya hota jaise agar ye root hai for example let me explain root So if there is a meristem here, so next what happens is it has added few more cells. It has grown further, further, and further. Could you make out what happened over here? Yes, sir. that just a root axis kept on elongating 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 that's the way it is growing the root region but when it comes to which one stem so if this is the axis this axis has to give rise to axillary bud and leaves on a regular basis so have a look if this is the meristem well this meristem goes up along with the growing axis it has left behind one layer jo baad mein yahan pe reh ke branches develop karega leaves develop karega samajh mein aaya aapko fir ye aage gaya to ek aur point pe layer ko leave behind kiya so that from there it will keep on developing new structures jaise yahan pe leaf hai branch hai as structures ko grow karna hai agar so both of them responsible for elongation of axis but apical meristem has an additional job to do that is apart from elongating the stem axis it is also developing axillary buds new leaves and branches at regular interval i hope you have understood the same now yes sir okay any other person having any question feel free to ask
okay it seems no question on your part we shall have a break for 4 5 minutes and then we resume our work marismatic tissue are you back all of you yeah fine so we were discussing about marismatic tissue we have already talked about this uh, apical meristem let's talk about the intercalary meristem this is the specialized meristem which is mainly found in monocots i gave you the combination monocots have apical meristem and intercalary meristem absence of lateral meristem for dicot i said they have mainly apical meristem and lateral meristem absence of intercalary meristem so this is something which is mainly found in monocot plants you can see at the base of the leaves they are present even in a mature plant at the base of the leaf they occur this one is particularly identified as intercalary meristem let me explain with some another picture see look at this one the leaf base yahan pe ho sakta hai 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 wherever there is a leaf base in a grass in that region it has a meristematic tissue which is called as intercalary meristem what is the intercalary meristem please understand this one mostly it occurs in monocot plants it occurs between the mature tissues and in grasses particularly it is present at the base over there at the base of the grass blade ye jo grass ka leaf hai uske blade ka uska base jo hai wahan pe intercalary meristem hota hai why it is there so when this grass is eaten up by these you know parts of this grass are eaten up by this grazing animal the grazing herbivores when they remove these parts of the you know leaf over leaves over there at that time another leaf is regenerated and that is because of jaise isko kha liya herbivore so again the leaf needs to be regenerated and that regeneration of the leaf is possible because of what intercalary meristem present at the base of this leaf blade like this i hope you are getting the sense of what i am explaining to you are you getting the sense so number 1 intercalary meristem is something which is present mainly in which case monocot plants exactly at the base of the leaf in case of a grass between the permanent tissues over there what is the function it would regenerate the leaves if they are lost when the grazing herbivore are eating these plants that was about the intercalary meristem the third type of meristem that is known as what is called as lateral meristem because lateral meristem is responsible for secondary growth this is also known as secondary meristem as apical meristem and intercalary meristems were example of which one primary meristem
because their actions were going to give rise to you know primary growth in the plant body secondary meristem example lateral meristem is responsible for secondary growth and mainly it is found in dicot root and dicot stems only remember now description about these uh, this uh, lateral meristem location it is mainly found in the mature regions of root and shoot of many plants mainly the dicot plants they will produce the woody axis increase the girth of the stem mainly and appear later than that of primary meristem maine bola na primary meristem pehle aata hai wo pehle growth kar deta hai primary growth ye meristem baad mein ओरिजिनेट होता है मैं मैं यूज वर्ड कर एक वर्ड यूज कर रहा हूं ये इट इज ओरिजिनेटेड लेटर ऑन आफ्टर द प्राइमरी ग्रोथ इज अकम्पलिश दिस इज वट इज कॉल्ड एज सेकेंडरी मैरिस्टेम और अ लेटरल मैरिस्टेम बिकॉज दे आर अरेन्ज इन दिस सिलेंडर ये जो सिलेंडर है उसमें सर्क्यूलर सिलेंड्रिकल मैनर में अरेन्ज है ऑल अलॉन्ग द एक्सिस ऑफ दिस ऑर्गन mainly stem so that makes it to be called as even cylindrical meristem usko kya kehte hai cylindrical meristem bhi kehte hai positionally lateral meristem functionally secondary meristem and uh, shape wise the way it is arranged its a shape is cylindrical throughout the length of a cylindrical stem or root so it is called as सिलेंड्रिकल मैरिस्टेम इसके एग्जाम्पल्स होते हैं डिफरेंट टाइप्स के एग्जाम्पल है वास्क्यूलर केम्बियम इंटरफेसिकुलर केम्बियम एंड कॉर्क केम्बियम एक और वर्ड इसके लिए यूज होता है दैट इज अ केम्बियम tell me which are the four names of this meristem number 1 functionally it is a secondary meristem the one which will give rise to secondary tissues and will be providing secondary growth opportunities number 2 lateral meristem in the plant axis mainly the stem axis and root axis it is placed laterally it is called lateral meristem as a patch it's a cylindrical patch of meristematic tissue so it is also identified as cylindrical meristem the popular name of this meristem is also there that is called cambium these are the four different names of the same structure i hope you have understood the same let us talk about the different types of this केम्बियम टिश्यू देखिए ये जो प्लांट एक्सिस है लेट्स से आपने उसका स्टेम का सेक्शनल व्यू देख रहे हो सो ये अगर स्टेम होता तो उस स्टेम में इन दिस स्टेम एट अ सर्टन पॉइंट देर इज अ केम्बियम टिश्यू प्रेजेंट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ वास्क्यूलर केम्बियम got to look at this one what i am encircling vascular cambium can you make out vascular cambium acha iska meaning ye vascular bundles hai means root and stem and leaf may xylem and phloem arrange themselves into 
specific bundle form we call this as vascular bundles so let's assume that this is the stem axis in this stem axis these are the vascular bundles and from these vascular bundles in the middle of that one patch of tissue is passing this particular patch of tissue the black tissue that you can see it is a vascular cambium because it is passing through the vascular bundles it is passing through what vascular bundles so it is known as vascular cambium in this the part which is passing through the vascular bundle that portion of the vascular cambium is known as fascicular cambium and this patches which are part of vascular cambium but running between the not within the vascular bundle between the adjacent vascular bundles now that is called as intrafascicular cambium ye dono milke banate hai vascular cambium and one more cambium develops towards the periphery of the stem outside the vascular bundles and for that one the term is used it is known as cork cambium that is known as which one cork cambium in a mature dicot stem a circular patch of a uh, of a lateral meristem that develops passing through the vascular bundles entirely it is called as ring is a vascular cambium parts of this ring which are passing through the vascular bundle itself are known as fascicular cambium patches the remaining patches which are between the adjacent vascular bundles within that vascular cambium ring are known as intrafascicular cambium all these patches of fascicular cambium and all these patches of intrafascicular cambium together constitute what is called as vascular cambium and other than vascular cambium outside to the bundles towards the periphery of the stem another patch of lateral meristem is developed cylindrical meristem is developed secondary meristem is developed that patch is also known as cambium but this cambium is rather than vascular cambium this is called as cork cambium this cork cambium this intrafascicular cambium this fascicular cambium all of them collectively constitute the secondary meristem or a lateral meristem i have completed feel free to ask agar samajh mein nahi aaya hai if you have not followed if you have not understood koi bhi point khabar na padyo ho then you ask questions then you may ask questions for clarification question puchi saka se tumhara aap sawal puch sakte ho tell me clear or not kushi desai you have a question you ask yes sir sir uh, a pical meristem when present in the shoot uh, it grows and leaves some meristematic cells which in the in between which leads to growth of buds and flowers exactly 
so you said that uh, intercalary meristem is present at the uh, base of the leaves so then how can that be possible i did not understand that what happens in a monocot plants is that even if a once the leaf is normally grown up as it is it may be eaten up again and again normally jo grass hota hai herbivores feed upon grass mainly they eat the grass mainly so grass is face a major problem of being damaged on a regular basis so what happens is that if there is a dicot plant the left behind layer of apical meristem it would develop the axillary bud it would develop the leaf and it will be consumed up in that process but had it been the leaf of a monocot some such meristem shall be left behind even if the leaf is matured then you call it as intercalary meristem reason for this is that dicots generally not vulnerable to this grazing act by the herbivores but monocots mainly the grasses i am talking about so they face this problem so when they are eaten up they need to regenerate the leaf at that time this left behind meristem even after the leaf is already formed and matured still it is left behind which was used up in the case of what i got here it is left behind between the permanent tissues this one will again regenerate the leaf if it is damaged by the grazing animal so that's a special arrangement that has been provided in case of these grasses got it दोनों केसेस में एपाइकल मैरिस्टेम से लेफ्ट बिहाइंड पैच होता है ये मैरिस्टेम का एक में वो एक्सिलरी बर्ड और लीफ फॉर्मेशन के बाद यूज अप हो जाता है दूसरे में एक्सिलरी बर्ड और लीफ फॉर्मेशन के बाद भी लीफ के बेस पे रह जाता है एंड देन यू हैव टू कॉल इट एज दी इंटर कैलरी मैरिस्टेम जो अगेन एंड अगेन लीफ को रिजनरेट करने में हेल्प करेगा नॉर्मली दैट डजेंट है डाइकोट सो वी से intercalary meristem is present in monocot but not in dicot that's the way we understand i think it is clear coming back to our lateral meristem all of you are you clear or not regarding this thing what i have explained to you chaliye thoda revise kar lete hain isko question number 1 what is another name of lateral meristem the popular name of lateral meristem kya hota hai cambium why the cambium or the lateral meristem the lateral meristem is called as lateral meristem what is the exact position of it in the plant body it is present in which parts lateral axis of the plant body exactly mainly root and shoot so it is called as lateral meristem meristem another name tell me what is another name of this lateral meristem secondary meristem can you explain why secondary meristem why secondary meristem it is responsible for secondary growth which occurs mainly in dicot plants 
rarely in monocot plants so mainly this is present in dicots this tissue not in monocots acha what is another name of this lateral meristem cambium secondary meristem one more name is given to them cylindrical meristem look at their arrangement they are arranged in the form of a cylindrical patch in the root or shoot axis yahan pe vascular bundles the aapko yaad hai na hi ana acha so that's why it is a cylindrical one okay अच्छा ये वाले को क्या कहते हैं ये मैरिस्टेम को क्या कहते हैं द सर्कुलर पैच ऑफ अ मैरिस्टेम पासिंग थ्रू दी वास्कुलर बंडल्स इन अ सिलिंड्रिकल मैनर अरेंज इन साइड दी स्टेम एक्सिस रूट एक्सिस टुगेदर इसको क्या कहते हैं वास्कुलर केम्बियम एब्सोल्युटली राइट बैंग ऑन टारगेट यस गुड उसमें से मुझे आप आंसर दे दो लेबलिंग का इसको मैं ए पैच बोलता हूं और इसको मैं बी पैच बोलता हूं ए पैच को क्या कहते हैं बी पैच को क्या कहते हैं ए पैच फासिकुलर केम्बियम दिशा पारे गुड रिप्लाय बिकॉज इट इज पासिंग थ्रू दी वास्क्युलर बंडल सो इसको कहते हैं फासिकुलर केम्बियम गुड रुद्र ऑल्सो गुड और बी पैच इसको क्या कहते हैं इंटरफासिकुलर केम्बियम दे आर बिटवीन दी वास्क्युलर बंडल इज इंट इट एक है इंट्रा फैसिकुलर इंट्रा और एक है इंटर इंट्रा इज विद इन इंटर इज बिटवीन द वन विच इज पासिंग थ्रू दी बंडल इज अ इंट्रा फैसिकुलर केम्बियम द वन विच इज पासिंग बिटवीन दी वैसिकुलर बंडल इज दैट पैच कॉल्ड इंटर फैसिकुलर और इंट्रा फैसिकुलर एंड इंटर फैसिकुलर ऑल पैच इज मीट टू फॉर्म वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज टूगेदर all a patches and all b patches together will make what tell me come on tell me together they will form what is called as vascular cam and that is, that is correct and now my question is that another patch of and the 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 cambium that is present outside most towards the periphery of the stem that is called as not in the root in, only in stem that one is known as which one cork cambium dekho apical meristem in monocot and dicot root and shoot tip intercalary meristem at the base of the leaf mature leaves mainly in the monocot lateral meristem only in the dicot lateral meristem may be this uh, vascular cambium it can be found in root as well as in stem lateral meristem may be cork cambium only in the stem towards peripheral region the the these specifications you have to remember ha huh? na dekhiye vascular cambium ka patch dikhaya hai yahan और ये कॉर्क केम्बियम का पैच दिखाया है 
और मिलके बनते हैं लेटरल मैरिस्टम Okay, I think you have understood this again and again. Not needed to go through. Jayati, you have a question? Question? You can ask. Sir. Yeah, madam, you can stop the recording. It's over sir, for sir. the.